Are we ready? Judas and his salvation. Was Judas saved? No, he wasn't. How do I know he wasn't saved? John 17, verse 12. Our Lord in his high priestly prayer pretty much says that he didn't lose anyone that the Father gave him except the son of perdition. Son of perdition, son of destruction. John 17, verse 12. Okay. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you, have, you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. That phrase, son of perdition, only refers, is only used one other time. The phrase son of perdition is only used twice in the New Testament. Twice in the New Testament. Once here of Judas and another time of the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, the man of sin. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. But you guys got to listen and be attentive to see where I'm going with this because you're going to be in for a shock and surprise. Just be patient. Help me to help you and listen. Okay. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. This is used of the man of lawlessness, the man of sin. The man of Satan, filled with Satan, empowered by Satan, the Antichrist. Here it is, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3, okay? Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. The son of perdition, there you go. The phrase son of perdition is only used twice. One of the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, who is filled with Satan, Possessed with Satan, whom Satan works through, meaning he belongs to Satan. In other words, this phrase shows you that like the Antichrist, Judas belonged to Satan. And like the Antichrist, Judas was destroyed. Okay, John 6, 70 to 71. John 6, 70 to 71. Now read with me, guys. Razzles, read. Jesus answered... Them, did I not choose you the twelve, and one of you is a devil? See, I chose you the twelve, but one of you is a devil. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. So we see here, Judas is a devil. He belongs to Satan, right? He's a son of perdition. Okay. Now, with that said, does that mean Jesus never desired the salvation of Judas? Does that mean Jesus never wanted Judas to be saved? Does that mean Jesus did not love Judas? No. Are you guys ready for a shock now? Are you guys now ready to for me to show you? The same Jesus shows he loves Judas, desired Judas's salvation and glorification, and even told Judas that he was dying on the cross for his sins. Are you ready? Are you ready? Razzles, are you ready? Because this is your question. Okay, Razzle, this is for you. Matthew 19, 28. Matthew 19, 28. Matthew 19, 28. So Jesus said to them, watch here now. Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, when a son of man sits on the throne of his glory... You who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones. That's the 12 apostles, one of whom is Judas. You who have followed me will sit on 12 thrones. That includes you, Judas, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, my goodness. Matthew 19, 28. That was my older brother, Salim. He's big and ugly. And if ugly was a sin, him and Frank would have to serve lifetime sentences. Okay. Matthew 19, verse 28. One more time. Again to Judas, Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Folks, 12 thrones, 12 apostles. 12 thrones, 12 apostles. One of whom is Judas. Do you see what Jesus told Judas? My desire for you, Judas, is that you sit on one of the 12 thrones with me in the regeneration. When I restore the earth and I come in glory, 
you who follow me will sit on one of the 12 thrones judging Israel because that's what I desire for you. That's what I want for you, Judas. No, Paul did not replace Judas, Gary. Paul did not replace Judas. Matthias replaced Judas in Acts 1, 21 to 26. Okay. Was Jesus lying? Was Jesus lying? Or did Jesus mean it from his heart, because he's God and cannot lie, that Judas, I want you with me in the regeneration on one of the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel? So, Razzle, do you see the heart of Jesus for Judas? Now, let's go. Let's go to Luke 10, 17 to 20. Luke 10, 17 to 20. Venom's my guy. Jewish believer in Jesus who did a great Batman skit, but he had to remove it because of ser serious Muslim issues. Anyway, Luke 10, 17 to 20. Then the 70 return. Luke 10, 17 to 20. Guys, pay attention. Then the 70 return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. 70 return, one of whom is Judas. Judas came with the 70, saying, Lord, demons submit themselves to me when I use your name, Lord. Now notice what Jesus says in Luke 10, 18 to 20. Pay attention, specifically verse 1. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you, he's speaking to all the disciples. Judas is there. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, meaning evil spirits, demonic spirits, and over the, all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall be any means, by any means, hurt you. Now watch here. Watch here, guys, 19 and 20. Verse 20, nevertheless... Do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Okay, Luke 10, 20, one more time. Luke 10, 20, one more time. Okay. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names, everyone present, Judas included, are written in heaven. Do you see the heart of Jesus even for Judas, whom he knew was the son of Satan, would betray him? Jesus is telling Judas, I love even you. I desire your salvation. I even have your name written because my desire is for you to be saved. But unfortunately, being a son of Satan, you will abandon me, reject me, and betray me, and not return to me and go to your destruction. But then it gets even better because then Jesus tells Judas, even on the cross, when I die, I die for your sins, but you don't benefit from it because you don't receive, because you don't believe truly. Luke 22, 19 and 20. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Notice, no qualification. All of you here, this body represents that I'm breaking my death, that I'm going to die for you, okay? This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now notice verse 20. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Doesn't qualify it. He doesn't say, not all of you, some of you, most of you, all of you except one. This cup is the new cup of my blood shed for you. And who was there when he said, for you, Luke 22, 21 and 23. Notice who was there. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. So Judas is here with me as I said these words. And truly the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do these things. Did you catch it? This, this bread is my body broken for you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you. And yet the hand of the betrayer is here on the table. So wait, Jesus, when you said that, you're including Judas? So Judas heard you 
speak to all of them, him included, saying to all of them, him included, I'm breaking my body for you. You too, Judas. I'm shedding my blood for you. You too, Judas. And yet one of you is going to betray me. One of you is going to betray me. In other words, what Jesus is showing is the audacity, the travesty, the blasphemy, that even though I'm going to die for this one and shed my blood for this one to procure his redemption, showing my love for him to the very end, he will still betray me anyway and spurn my love and reject me in spite of all I've done for him. Exactly, Jesus loves all. Exactly, Jesus loves all. You're right. Did you catch it? In other words, you're supposed to see the travesty, the audacity, the blasphemy of a man hearing Jesus say to him and looking right in his eyes, I break my body for you. I shed my blood for you. Yet nevertheless, the hand of the betrayer is on the table with me. That's how you're going to repay me. That's how you're going to respond to my love, that I love you to the point of dying for you. And how do you respond? You spit in my face and you sell me for 30 pieces of silver. Oh, Judas, what more could I have done for you? Right? It's touching, isn't it? So why did Jesus do it? So why why then, Jesus, did you die for Judas knowing he betray you? Let me explain the logic in that. Number one, to show that Jesus truly loves all his creatures, even those who reject him and condemn themselves to hell. And number two, to show how righteous his judgment is when he judges them in spite of all he has done for them. In other words, do you now blame Jesus for consigning Judas to hell in light of what Judas did? You understand? This now shows how just God is in his judgment. That I did this all for you, Judas. You slept next to me. I hugged you. I kissed you. I fed you. I clothed you. I protected you. I even gave you power to do miracles in my name, to raise the dead in my name, to cast out demons in my name. And then I shed my blood for you. And this is how you <clears throat> repay me. And this is what you do. Do you understand? So now when you see it from that perspective, is Christ thoroughly just in condemning Judas to everlasting destruction? See, it's even moving me in my spirit. It's moving me in my spirit, right? Because I can understand when Jesus is looking at him, see, it's moving in my spirit. <clears throat> He's looking at him, and he knows. You know what? You know why it's moving me? Let me break this down. Let me bring out the implication, guys. Let me bring out the implication. Okay, let me let me bring out the implication. From day one, when Judas came, Jesus looked at him. See, it's actually moving me. <clears throat> it's moving me in my spirit. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, take over for the glory of Christ. He looks at a man, and Jesus knew from the beginning, this is my betrayer. This is the one who's going to betray me for 30 pieces of silver. This is the one who's going to be filled with Satan. And he's going to hand me over to the Jews, to hand me over to the Romans. Because of his betrayal, they will beat me to a bloody pulp and whip me to the point of death. Spit on me, beat me with rods, place a crown of thorns, and then nail spikes in my hands and feet. Hanging on the cross, gasping for life. It's all because of this man who's going to betray me. And he knew it. And you know what he did? Welcome, Judas. Welcome. Sure, you can follow me. <laughs> Come on. Of course, Judas. You're more than welcome to be part of my apostolic band. And all he did for all those years of ministry was love him. Bless him, be gracious to him, kind to him, 
provide for him, feed him, clothe him. And even if you go to John, if you go to John chapter 12, it says that Judas was in charge of the money bag. Guys, let me blow your mind away a little more. Can I, you guys really want me to go deep on this? You want me to go deep on this? You guys really want me to go to deep? See, as I'm talking about it, uh, my heart is breaking. It's really moving me, in my spirit, to talk about this. <clears throat> it really does. When I talk about this, it moves me in my heart. Okay. John 12 says that Jesus even entrusted Judas to the money bag. You know what that money bag means? It means that Jesus was not ashamed to collect donations for ministry. Guys, let this blow you away. Jesus, who's God Almighty, humbled himself to such an extent that he depended on the financial support of his followers to keep him and his followers in ministry. Did you know that? How many of you guys didn't know that? Irene already answered that question. Go back. Did you know that? Don't take my word for it, John 12. And you know what John 12 says? It says that Judas used to help himself to the money. He would steal from the money bag. But here's what's mind-blowing. Here's what's mind-blowing. Jesus knew that Judas was of the devil. Jesus knew that Judas was stealing from the money bag. Jesus knew Judas would betray him. And he never said a word to him, never rebuked him, never embarrassed him. He let him do what he did till the very end when he betrayed him. In fact, it's even more mind-boggling that in John 13, if you read the chapter, it said Jesus got off the table, removed his robe, put a towel, and he started washing the feet of the disciples, and he washed the dirty feet of Judas, who in a, in a moment would be dwelt by Satan, knowing that he's going to betray me tonight. Tonight he's going to betray me, and he still washed his feet. See how amazing his love is? You see how amazing his love is? If I knew this man was going to betray me, if I knew this man was stealing, I would insult him. I'd ridicule him. I may even beat him to a bloody pulp or he'd have to beat me up. Jesus knew this is my betrayer. <clears throat> He's going to betray me for 30 pieces of silver. He's going to steal from the money of the ministry, people giving from their money to my ministry. He's going to steal. That's okay. I'm going to love him till the end. I'm going to love him to the end. And that's what he did. <clears throat>